I'm going to show you how to create an automated test in Reflect. Reflect is a new kind of tool that lets you create web uh, regression tests without writing any code. Um, I'm logged into the Reflect application right now, but I haven't created any tests yet. So to do that, I'm going to click on the Create Test button. Creating a test is as simple as executing the manual steps that you want to record. And so uh, to demonstrate this, I'm going to record a test against starterstory.com. We have the capability to test against any publicly accessible site, but we can also test against um, sites that are not publicly accessible, like your staging or QA environment. When we load up a recording session, we're actually loading up an a instrumented version of Chrome in the cloud. Um, as I interact with this instrumented version of Chrome, it's going to record my actions and translate that into a human readable set of steps uh, that's also uh, can be executed uh, using with via our test runner. So I'm going to demonstrate here how to record a test that logs in to starterstory.com, changes some of the settings uh, on my account, and logs back out. The first thing I'm going to do is just validate that I'm not logged in. And this will demonstrate one of the, the key features of Reflect, which is visual uh, observations. If I click on this observe element, it's going to prompt me to click and drag over a region on the page. Uh, it will then capture the element that I was uh, I click and drag over. If there's text over it uh, in that element, it's going to show it here and allow me to click uh, save, which will capture a screenshot of that. So now it's observing that uh, the sign in uh, link is displayed in the top right. I'm going to go ahead and log in using a, an account that I already created. And I'm going to do some steps just to validate that the behavior when you're logged in is working. So maybe the first thing I'll do is validate that it shows my name up there in the top right. Uh, it's looking correct. Maybe I'll validate that it shows my full name here. And then just quickly going through some functionality. We've already demonstrated input entry. So what I'm going to show you here is uploading a file. Um, I'll choose an avatar here. So let's say I wanted to upload a picture of a dog. I'll click upload here as, as and that will then show that this is now a dog JPEG allowing me to update my profile. I can go to the profile here to uh, assert that it's now the picture of the dog that I uploaded. But maybe I want to go back and change it back to my original avatar, which was uh, a cat picture. So I'll go here. Again, choose a file, and I'll choose cat, click upload, click update, and now my profile should have a picture of a cat. Yeah, there it is right here. I'll go ahead and do one final thing here, which is signing out. And now that I'm signed out, I'll validate that I'm signed out by asserting that it says sign in on the top right. Okay. So I'm going to save this test. And when I save it, what we do uh, immediately after saving a new recording is executing it. This is an important step because it lets us validate that the test that you just recorded is repeatable. There are certain situations where tests uh, would not be repeatable. Uh, if you're testing against a site that's very dynamic, say a news site with breaking news at, uh, at the top of the, the, the page, an e-commerce site with real-time inventory, or say using A-B testing, um, you would have to, you would potentially have to edit your test to make sure that your test is repeatable. But we should be good on this site, which is pretty static. Uh, while this is running, I'm gonna show you how I could go about scheduling this test uh, or any future tests that I have to run. So right now, the, uh, the tests that I have uh, set up in Reflect, which right now will only be one, uh, are not scheduled to run at any sort of regular cadence. But uh, to, to do that, it's as simple as clicking Add Schedule and choosing the schedule here. So uh, the most frequent that you can run a test is every hour, but you could also run it daily at a certain time, weekly or monthly, depending on your deployment schedule or how often um, you, know, you would like to validate that something is working. I'll just go ahead and switch it to noon, click Save, and uh, we're back here. And good timing, our test just completed. And you can see that since it's green, it passed. 
I'm going to go ahead and click on it, and this will take us into the view that you would see um, anytime a test runs. So uh, here, there, this is the test that actually, uh, this is a video of the, the test running using our test runner. So this is not a video of, of me recording it. It's a video of our test runner actually executing it. Um, we try to provide as much context as possible so that you can not only reproduce any bugs that might occur, but also try to root cause the problem. So uh, we think a full fidelity video is a big help. We also show you all the English language steps uh, on the left rail. As I click play, you can see that it is going to be highlighting the step that it's on. I can skip ahead or go back uh, whenever I want if I want to pinpoint uh, what exactly was happening. On the bottom here, there is a JavaScript console, which shows me the JavaScript uh, console messages that occurred up to that point in time. I also have network requests. So again, if there was a uh, if there was a bug, you could look here quickly for any JavaScript errors or uh, network 400 or 500 status codes to try to pinpoint what the problem is. Every uh, Every element that we interact with in Reflect, we grab uh, metadata to make sure that in the future, if there's any changes to the site, which uh, visually make things the same, keep things the same, but may change the structure of the page, uh, we grab metadata so that we are resilient to those types of changes. So for example, uh, looking at this click on the view profile uh, link, you can see that we, in the selector section, we've grabbed a bunch of different selectors for this one element. We grab these at recording time, and the reason why we grab so many is because we want to make sure that if you change something like, let's say, this hero class, or maybe this call to action button class, that our uh, selectors will still be resilient. So we will only choose a selector here if the element is visible on the viewport, if it uniquely selects a, uh, a one element within the viewport, and that element is visible to the user. If all of these selectors um, fail, so that none of these meet the criteria, then your test will fail. We also exec execute assertions against uh, other things uh, automatically, like asserting that the, uh, the text of the element that you clicked on is correct, and also making sure that the click that you uh, is within the bounds of the element itself. A few other things to take a look at here. Um, those visual assertions that I did at several points uh, in the test, um, I can take a look at the the expected uh, state, uh, which is basically what we recorded, what it looked like when we recorded, and then the actual state here and compare them. In this case, they're exactly equivalent. If there were any different, I could click on this delta view and it would show me uh, basically the differences between the two uh, highlighted in red. If uh, for any at any point in time the you, you redesign this this section. Um, this step would fail, but you could easily click on accept changes to say that the new state is the state that you should assert against going forward. Uh, again, we want to make it easy not only to record tests, but to maintain them as well. Going back here quickly to uh, one of the input text fields that I that I interacted with, the, the login username in this case, I could go ahead and just simply change it if I wanted to in the future. Um, and just click save and run. This will this will uh, update the test going forward and re-execute it just to make sure that my changes worked correctly. Um, finally, the other way to update your test is via this re-record button right here. This simply lets me re-record uh, from this point in time. So let's say um, I was uh, this test had failed, you know, at this particular step. I could go into the test run. Click re-record from the step that's failing. It will kick me into the recording experience over here. Let me actually re-record from that point in time and then update the test. So that's a very quick overview of Reflect. Again, a Reflect allows you to create uh, repeatable, maintainable tests in minutes without writing any code. Check us out at reflect.run. Thank you.